Hey Canucks fans, it's official. Bring on the Minnesota Wild. I'm Clay Emo, I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter. I'm at Clayton Emo on Instagram. I'm the founder of the GLCPC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club. And this is my Canucks take, all in one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary, my second video for Tuesday, May the 26th. This is where you get Canucks insight that's positive and timely. Speaking of timely, just two hours ago, the NHL, NHLPA announced the return to play plan. And it was a confirmation, an affirmation of a lot of things that were already rumored, reported, leaked, whatever word you want to use. There are a couple of nuances, which I'll get into now, but in essence, 90% of it was things that we'd already heard or things that had already been reported on, but it's still nice to get official confirmation of these things. So let's go. The first thing is um, that the regular season is indeed deemed done. It was put on pause on May 11, uh, March 11, excuse me, March 11, that's the word the NHL used, that they were pausing the regular season. And as it got deeper and deeper into this COVID crisis, it became less and less likely that they would come back with regular season games. So they did indeed confirm that they will go straight to a qualifying round. I'll get to that in a second. So the regular season is done and the standings are based on points percentage. It's something that I've been talking about for the past a month or so, last two months, and it's the only fair way, and therefore the Canucks are deemed seventh actually in the Western Conference, as opposed to ninth or 10th, which they would have been if they went by points. But it makes sense to go by points percentage. You can't penalize the team because of the schedule that the, the, the NHL schedule makers made for them. So the Vancouver is seventh um, overall in the Western Conference, and I'll get to why that's important in a couple of minutes. By the way, a lot of these things that I'm gonna talk about over the next few minutes is stuff that I've already talked about over the past couple of weeks. Um, if, especially if you've been watching these vlogs, a lot of this won't be news to you because I've outlined a lot of these things over the past couple of weeks. But it was nice to hear that the NHL has indeed deemed the regular season done. They talked about the four, uh, the you know, the four phases. We knew that phase one already took place. Now they're entering, uh, we're finishing phase one right now, which is basically nothing going on. Uh, players quarantining, players staying away. Phase two, as I, I talked about a few days ago, will start in early June. Phase three will be first half of July, they are saying, and that's formal training camps. And then phase four will be the actual, the actual return to play, which looks like it could be sometime in August. It will be in two hub cities, not four, two, and Vancouver is one of 10 finalists. There's two other Canadian teams, there's Toronto and Edmonton, and the, there's an entire list in alphabetical order, Chicago, Columbus, Dallas, Edmonton, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, Minnesota, Pittsburgh, Toronto, and Vancouver. You, uh, they're likely gonna do one team from the Western Conference, of course, one team from the Eastern Conference. So really Vancouver is up against Chicago, Dallas, Edmonton, Vegas, and LA. And oh, actually there's a lot there. Uh, maybe they won't actually go West and East because then I look at it, there's only three teams from the Eastern Conference that would be Columbus, Pittsburgh, and, and Toronto. The seven teams are from the Western Conference. So we'll see how it goes, but it's nice to know that Vancouver is indeed one of the 10 finalists and it makes sense. Okay, let's talk about the playoff format. The first round is not technically the playoffs. It's, it's actually the qualifying round. And that's, they're not calling it the play and they're call, calling it the qualifying round. And let's just talk about one conference so it's, it's easier. If you want to think about the whole league, just multiply these numbers by two. But they're gonna basically take the bottom eight teams in the Western Conference, five through 12. Five will play against 12, six against 11, seven against 10, eight against nine. So those four, those eight teams will play in this qualifying round to get down to four winners. Those four winners will join the four top seeded teams who will actually be playing each other in a round robin for seeding. It'll be St. Louis, it'll be uh, Colorado, it'll be Vegas, it'll be Dallas. They'll play each other once, so a total of three games for, for every team. And then regular, regular season, overtime, shootout rules, and then they'll rank them one through four based on how they do in those three games against each other. And then if there's a tie, they will go by points percentage. Whoever's higher in the, in the um, regular season will break the tie. And that's to at least give some uh, weight, some affirmation to the fact that you finished uh, higher than the other team. So that order would be St. Louis, Colorado, Vegas, and then Dallas. So those four teams play each other in a seated, to get determined seating one through four. Then the other four uh, winners of those, those four qualifying rounds will then join them to make your, t uh, your set of eight teams in the East, eight teams in the West. Now you have your traditional 16 team playoff bracket. Now it's interesting, a couple things here is once you do the round robin, the qualifying round, technically not playoffs, now you're in the playoffs with your 16 teams, eight per conference. The actual format of the first and second round, both seedings and brackets, or bracket, seeding versus bracket, and the length of series are still to be determined. So contrary to popular belief, it's not 
guaranteed best of sevens here. It could be best of fives in the first two rounds of the playoffs. So that'll be very interesting. Obviously, a lot of ramifications to that. And something that I talked about a, a couple days ago is how do you, are you going to reseed or are you going to go to traditional bracket? And the example I use is you have number five, um, Edmonton, playing against number 12, Chicago. In a typical bracket, the winner of 5-12 would play against the number four team of the round robin seeding. And then, but if Chicago beats Edmonton, then you're having a 4-12 matchup, whereas the number one seed will have to play against the winner of 8-9, Calgary, Winnipeg. So you can see where it's actually disadvantage to that number one seed. They could be playing against an eight or nine seed in the second round, where the number four seed would be playing against a number 12 seed if 12 beats five, if Chicago beats Edmonton. So if you follow what I'm saying, that's actually not the fairest way if they go by a traditional bracket. In that scenario, the fourth seeded team would actually have an advantage by playing against a lower seed. Or you reseed all the teams, the four round robin winners, the four, the four round robin teams, the four qualifying winners, and then you seed them one through eight, and then you go with the traditional bracket from there. So the bracket versus seeding and the length of the playoff series not determined right now for rounds one and two. That's a very, very key point. Round three and round four, so the conference finals and the stand in the cup finals, those will be bets of seven, as they should be. So that's what has to do, that's um, you know the news on the playoff format. Then let's get in, oh, and with that, because Vancouver is confirmed to be number seven by points percentage, Minnesota is com uh, confirmed to be number 10. It is Vancouver versus Minnesota. I'm sure we're gonna be doing a lot of these playoff, you know, a lot of these uh, qualifying round previews as we get closer. Qualifying round, not playoffs, not play in, qualifying round. We have a lot of time to preview that series, Vancouver versus Minnesota. I already did a quick one last week, but we, I'm sure we're doing more of those. But we don't, I can't say now that the winner is going to play against Colorado Avalanche, the number two seed, because we don't know what that number two seed is going to be, depending on what happens on those four teams playing the round robin. So a lot of uncertainty still for sure. Then the last thing we want to talk about, and the most confusing thing, is the NHL draft. So the draft lottery will indeed be on June 26th before any of these games, before phase two is even done, basically. So you, picture, you have the seven teams that did not make the playoffs, right? The bottom seven teams, and that's in order. Detroit, Ottawa, and San Jose, but they give it to Ottawa. So it's Detroit, Ottawa, Ottawa, LA, Anaheim, New Jersey, and Buffalo. So those seven teams have better odds. And then there's the next batch, right? The eight teams that are gonna lose their qualifying uh, rounds, the, the qualifying series. Four from the West, four from the East, that makes eight. So now you have the seven non-qualifying teams, then you have another eight losers of qualifying rounds. So there's your 15. So basically, they're gonna do three draws. A draw for the first overall pick, a draw for the second overall pick, a draw for the third overall pick. In a perfect world, they draw, and each of the three draws, it's one of the first seven teams uh, Detroit, Ottawa, Ottawa, LA, Anaheim, New Jersey, or Buffalo, and then that's very simple. Then those are the f top three picks, and then they, they order the rest through points percentage reversed, right? And that makes sense. However, remember June 26th, before these qualifying rounds even start in August, but if a qualifying loser, if that, for lack of a better term, happens to win any of those three lottery draws, either the, for the first overall, second overall, third overall, we don't know who that team's gonna be because we don't even know which eight teams are gonna lose their qualifying round. So if you follow what I'm saying, any of those first three lottery draws for first, second, or third overall, if it's in the top seven, it's fine. Those are the seven. If it's in the bottom eight, the teams that yet to be determined, they're gonna to have to determine those teams later, not until after the qualifying round is done. Then the qualifying round is done, you have your eight teams that have lost, four from the west, four from the east, and any draws that had to be deferred, if any of those bottom teams had won the initial draft lottery on June 26, then you draw those spots, whether it's for first overall, third overall, second overall, a combination of a few, whatever it may be. And those, for those eight teams, they all get an equal um, percentage of winning the lottery. So it doesn't matter what your points percentage was if, with respect to this phase two, this part two of the draft lottery. So I hope that makes sense to you. Yeah, you know, they do actually do a, you know, a dis declining percentage when they do the initial lottery on June 26, right? The first seven teams got better odds, and then really, then it descends all the way down eight teams, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. But we don't know what those teams are because they haven't played. But if any of those three bottom eight teams win part one of the lottery, then in this part two of the lottery, 
they will all have equal odds to win whatever whatever pick they're playing for, so, uh, they're drawing for. So I hope that makes sense. All I'm saying is basically uh, for the eight teams that lose the, um, the qualifying rounds, once those eight teams are named and finalized, because we know that they lost, then all their odds are equal, as opposed to before that, on June 26th, when they do the initial lottery, there's actually a weighted system, but we don't know who those teams are. It's kind of hard to explain when I, I don't put graphics up or I, I don't put any uh, you know pictures up, but I think if you, if you follow what I was saying, I think I explained it relatively well. So there's a lot to talk about. There's a lot, whether it was the NHL officially deeming the season ended, whether it was the phases, whether it was the playoff matchups, the seedings, the qualifying round, or the draft lottery. They talked about, and hub cities. So, so many things, five or six different things that we can talk about. Um, so, so many questions. I could have like 10 or 12 questions of the day here. So basically, my question to you is, what stands out to you the most? What part is the most confusing? What part um, are you really interested in? Whatever you wanna talk about, I would love to hear. Leave a comment below. There's so much we can talk about, but I would love to hear um, any of your thoughts behind NHL, the season ending, points percentage, standings, hub cities, phases, draft lottery, seeding, qualifying round, best of five, best of seven. There are so many things we can talk about and I'd love to engage with you. So leave a comment below. I'd love to read, react, and reply. Subscribe if you like to, like this video if you like to. Stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves, take care of each other. The NHL is moving closer to returning to play. I think that's good news for, for most of us, if not all of us. Have a great day. God bless and go Canesco.